right, guys, we just got back from the movie theaters, just watched Tenet. We we're super pumped, and uh, let me tell you something, man. You know, first things first, the theater was safe. I thought everything was pretty good. Mm -hmm. uh, 30% capacity for the theater that we went to. Um, a so mask was a must. Mask was definitely a must. Um, we brought hand sanitizer. Yeah, hand right sanitizer. On <laughs> yeah, no refills. That was the only No refills. Part. I know, and I love my refills. Which I get it. They don't want multiple, like, people... Touching the machine all the time and mm -hmm. stuff like that. No, I hear it. I'm, I'm all for it. If it brings movies back yes. in, a, in a safer way, yeah. I'm all for it. And to be honest, I felt safer going into that movie theater than I do at the grocery store. We had a whole row to ourselves. Yeah. And yeah. Was, you know, you know what I mean? There people was no sitting in front of us. Yeah, people sitting in front of us, people sitting behind us, but everybody was spaced out for the most part. So it was definitely safe. I'll definitely you know feel comfortable going back and watching another film for sure. Uh, but yeah, Tenet was definitely a ride. I'm just gonna go in with my first reaction and my first kind of like how I feel right after the movie. Um, definitely a ride. Uh, I would say like the first half an hour of the movie, it's like really hard to to, to kind of keep track, and you find yourself trying to keep track with the story. But then things start to unfold, and it's just a wild ride from beginning to end. Action is phenomenal. Christopher Nolan really outdoes himself with the whole time traveling stuff and, and just the ideas in this movie are like so ambiguous and so ambitious. It's ridiculous. But definitely from, you know, beginning to end, super action packed from beginning to end. And, and you know, John David Washington did a great job in his role. Really portrays like this just espionage, like spy role. He just super dope what he does. Robert Pattinson did a great job in his role as well. And just, yeah, I enjoyed it. Everything overall for, for the most part. Yeah, me too. Um, he hit his mark, Christopher Nolan. Yeah. Um, all I have to say really is wow, wow, and wow. Um, yeah. Also, it, the movie is a masterpiece. Yeah. You could say what you want. You may not like his style, but when you break it down, or you, or not even that you won't like his style, you might be confused. Yes. I mean, if you're not into physics and that whole jazz, um, then you might not really keep up with the film. But regardless, it's a masterpiece of a film. The way it was written, the way it was filmed, how hard it must have been to film some of these fight sequences when you're dealing with inversion. Yes. I mean, it was amazing. And it tackled time travel, which I love in movies. I mean, there's nothing better for me. And overall, I loved every second of it. John David Washington, I mean, he he made his mark. If he didn't already... It, with the Black Klansman, he did now. He's here to stay, and he's going to be here for a long time. And Robert Pattinson, you can't say Twilight anymore. If you saw this before you even thought about Batman, you wouldn't even question it. No, for sure. He's yeah. an amazing actor, and them together, the chemistry was off the chain. This is a spoiler review, so... Yeah, this is the part where we get... If you don't want to know details, then just don't tune in anymore. Yeah, this is the <laughs> part where we get deep and we you know, we dive into the to the juicy stuff about the film. So, mm -hmm. All right, guys, so Tenet, once we heard the title, everybody was kind of wondering what Tenet is. Tenet is just the organization that John David Washington... Mind you, spoilers, that John David Washington created in the future, and it's The protagonist. Yes, the protagonist. Yeah, it's, a, it's an organization of spies. Of spies that yes. really go back in time and fight the fight. Yes. And stop World War Three. Yeah, they're, they're, they're trying to stop the end of... Human or the algorithm. Yeah, they're trying we'll to stop... to that. Yes, they're trying to stop the end of human mankind. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Ran by John David Washington, which we don't really find out until the end. So that's like the big thing through the whole thing. He's working for Tenet, not knowing that he's actually working for himself. He is the creator. This is time travel, so, you know, be, be ready for all that. Absolutely. And we'll go from there, from understanding Tenet to inversion. Inversion, um, they basically have a machine that creates the inversion, which is basically you're not going forward in time. You can't do that. But you can go back in time. And literally, it's a machine, red and blue side. You go in one side, and when you come out the other, you're literally doing the opposite. You're going back in time. The blue is the inversion. Okay, so you you can literally see yourself. If, you're, if you go in the other side, you can see yourself coming in to the building. And if you're looking on the other side, you can see yourself come back. And leave. Yeah, it's, it's literally a mirror effect, right? You're going back in time. But when you go back in time, things are in reverse. You, you can't breathe the air because, you know, it's, in, it's inverted because it's inverted air. It's coming out, not in your body. So you need oxygen. And everything is going in reverse. You kind of got to go with your instinct. I believe yeah, that's how sure. they described it. Yeah. Just like any other time travel story or movie, you can't come into contact with your old self or you don't want to. And you can't come in physical contact because when the particles come together, they will. 
So that's kind of inversion, um, and they use that to go back in time to find things and go back and get things that they otherwise couldn't go back and get or change. And in this case, they're going back to get the pieces of the algorithm, which we will now describe what is the algorithm. The algorithm is based, it, it's a formula. Yeah. It, it's a formula of inversion, but they, it's in a physical form. Yep. That's why there are nine pieces that co collectively come almost like a, a shaft. Yeah. And... It's in physical form, but it is the formula, and they do it so it can't be copied or replicated. And you need all nine pieces. And you need yeah. all nine pieces, and that's what our protagonist uses to potentially end the... He wants to end all worlds because with that algorithm in inversion, in, an, in the explosion, you could possibly create a place where everything doesn't exist. Exactly. And our antagonist is already dying of cancer. So he feels like if he ha if he's going, everybody else is coming with him. He's really like an evil asshole. Yes, like exactly. Sure. Yeah. But it's actually necessary in this movie. And those are the three main points where we think if you don't understand those, you probably won't understand the movie fully, but you'll still enjoy it. Yeah. But the, the, those are those three. are if, Once you unlock those keys, you can understand the movie a lot better. For sure. And I think now we should get into the shits. Yes. Let me tell you something. All right. Would you wait? Oh, let me ask you. What did you think about the whole time travel thing? Did you did you feel like it worked? I think the time traveling does work perfectly. Um, I just love the way everything unfolds itself, right? Because mm -hmm. going into it, we know that there's time travel involved somewhat, right? Mm -hmm. But you don't really see any of it until halfway through the movie. Mm -hmm. It's a long movie too, by the way. But everything is setting up so beautifully. And then once you get to the time travel portion, actually, I'm, not, I'm lying. Time travel is through the whole movie. You just don't know it. You just don't know it. You I don't know it. to say that. Everything unfolds to you as the movie goes on, which is like amazing storytelling. So once we hit a certain halfway point through the movie, things start to unfold, and you start to notice that everything you just watched, there was different layers, multiple layers within what you just watched the first half of the movie. I mean, yeah, spoiler anyways. I mean, from the beginning when he meets Robert Pattinson, time travel's right there. Yes. Robert Pattinson is one of the main character's child. In the whole movie, which is mind blowing, you go through the whole movie not even knowing you think they just met. Yep. No, they've been had a relationship. He was actually sent there by John David Washington. Yes. Yeah. Which was an explosion when I found that in my brain. It was craziest just shit in the world. Yeah. Because you know, through the whole thing, you think that they just meet for the first time. They're spies working together. You know, trying uh, you know save the world and, and, and stop World War Three or whatever. And, so. and what's crazy about that? It's basically everyone that John David Washington comes into play with. Yeah has already met him and knows but they, they literally can't tell each other no because then you'll change you don't know if he's gonna act the same if he has that information yes right and yeah. there, there's a scene in the airport where robert pattinson's character neil, well, neil robert pattinson's character yeah. um comes into contact with a, another character which we don't know we don't really see at first he pulls his mask off and sees yeah. him and runs away we all thought it was awkward yeah, it was. but it was because he saw john david washington yep and mind you we call him john david washington because in the movie he has no name it is just the protagonist literally that's his name his protagonist yeah the time travel thing is very sensitive when it comes to coming in contact yeah but one of the best scenes that i thought were in the whole movie that basically just it, it's tenant in a nutshell was basically the whole middle yeah. With, with, with the uh, the highway scene. Amazing. Going in from that to the airplane scene, coming back from the airplane scene in reverse, going back into the, the highway scene. I don't think I've seen... I haven't got that feeling since the fight scenes in Inception when they're floating and defying gravity. I mean... Yeah, that was nuts. To me, I haven't ha had that feeling since. And it's funny because he gave me that feeling. Um, absolutely brilliant I absolutely they, they well directed and it must have been so hard to pull off yeah they start off heavy too you go right into the opera scene mm -hmm. like directly in where there's you, inversion as well yeah and you have your first little sight of inversion which is actually robert pattinson's character but you just don't know right like he's all suited up in like the swat team outfit um john david washington didn't know who it was nobody knew who it was everybody mm -hmm. on the team was like that was not one of us and we find out later that it's actually robert pattinson because he was there to save his life a few times. A few times. Yeah, yeah, a few times. Because we need John David Washington to stay alive and do what he was going to do in, yes. you know, to come. And we kind of figure that out along the movie. Basically, at the end, when we, we, we had to watch it twice to really break down what we saw. And even up until we made this video, we're going back, looking at things, understanding. Um, to the point where John David Washington's character is so powerful in this movie that we broke down that. So when Seder gives us a flashback of when he first came into contact with the power of inversion and yep. all that. He was a young boy, and he talked about how he was looking for petroleum um, at the end of the Soviet Union, 
and he came into contact with this box and inside this box was gold and what looked to be um, papers with notes, maybe even plans. So right then, you know, he's telling you he doesn't know how he got it, why he got it. But if you understand this movie, you understand that John David, he's basically telling John David Washington how he found it. So now when John David Washington in the future realizes what he has to do, yeah, he knows where to send it to him. And that's the thing, too. Everybody refers to it as the unknown creator because nobody knows who created it. Nobody knows. Mm hmm. But it was John David Washington. Everything ran through him. Yes, yeah. and you think, why, right? Well, if he knew Dave, Robert Pattinson's character, Neil, as a kid, when he grows up, he's going to realize, wait, that's Neil that helped me. Yep. So he knows right there he has to keep every plan in motion. And I've broken it down to the point where I think he has to send Robert Pattinson on his journey in order to complete himself. You have to. You know, and he had to have a protagonist. He already knew who the protagonist was. He had to make it the same one. And in this way, he can control the protagonist. He doesn't have to go look for him. Yep. He knows where he's going to be. They just have to fight that same battle. And he has to basically set these pawn pieces up in order for them to come in full circle and work. Yeah. So we'll jump into the ending now. And that ending is basically when Robert Pattinson tells John David Washington that they do know each other. And there's little clues to the whole movie where he knows a little more about John David Washington's character than than we know. We're wondering how he knows this stuff, right? But he basically tells him at the end when they decide to separate the algorithm themselves. Um, they th there's a code basically you should hide it, kill yourself so that yeah there's no evidence of it. Basically, that knowledge is too powerful for any human to have, right? Exactly. You can't trust anybody with it. You don't know what they're gonna do with it. So morally, everybody should kill themselves. So Robert Pattinson's character gives his back. And John David Washington's like confused. He's like, you're going back. And yeah, he's going back. And if you figure out why, if you're following the movie, there's a part at the end when they're trying to get the algorithm um, away from the bomb where he gets saved yeah. by someone uh, gets shot right in the head. And it was inverted and he didn't really know why. Nobody really even stopped to know why, because it was a very climactic scene. Yeah. So we were kind of happy that it just didn't happen. Yeah. But that happened, and if you and now that we're thinking about it, at the end he's telling him this. He's telling him he's going back in. He's going back in because he's got to go back in inversion, go back the opposite way to stop that bullet from hitting John David Washington, so he can stop the algorithm. It all comes full circle. Yeah, it's nuts. You see Robert Pattinson as a kid with his mother at the end get protected by John David Washington, and just goes to show how it's going to go full full circle. Great movie, can't complain. Yeah, absolutely. Just mind blowing. Um, the action set piece at the end, just like buildings are being inverted so it would fucking explode and then reform and then explode at the top. Like some just amazing, amazing stuff. You keep going back and forth because there's two teams. The blue side is the inverted side and then the red side is you're, you're moving in forward motion. And just the, a the action because they're cutting back and forth between the inver inverted uh, POV and then back and forth between the regular POV. And you just get some really, really, really cool action stuff. It's yeah, it's super awesome. at the same time. It's just visionary stuff. It's hard. It's it, just the idea. Yeah. To super pull crazy. it off. You can have that idea even when you come up with it, but to pull it off on screen. Yeah. Everything they did, like I said, I mean. A1, man. <laughs> A plus, and it lived up to all the hype. Yeah. Um, some I've heard some people, very few bad reviews, but I... I, I tend to lend that to the fact that they may not understand it. One thing, the score was, uh, I love the score. I thought the score was amazing. Like, just throughout the whole movie, and there's a lot of score in this movie, even through dialogue sequences. There's a lot of score. It's great stuff, though, seriously. Amazing. Yeah, we could sit here and just, like, debate stuff talk and it, talk forever. about stuff all day. It's one of those films that just, you know, the more times you watch it, the more things we'll pick up. I'm sure the more times we watch it throughout the week, we'll fucking text each other talking about more shit that we saw. So Exactly. It's one of those films. If you guys enjoyed it or if you haven't watched it yet, you shouldn't have watched this video. Or if you want to talk thank about you. it, throw it on the, go on the comments. We'll talk. Yeah, absolutely. Any theories you guys got, let's hear it. Yeah, for sure. All right, guys. If you enjoyed the video, please like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. And until next time, guys.